All right, so starting out, we're going to find amplitude and period. Again, amplitude's how high and low it'll go. Period is what again? Yeah, how long is it going to take to start repeating? So amplitude. Are you sure? Yeah, you're right. Because it is this number out there, and it is either sine or cosine. Remember those other four? Amplitude does not apply strictly. And so the amplitude, yes, is two. Period. Well, what is cosine's usual period? Normally it's 360, correct? And we're going to divide by... So what's that end up being? Only 90 degrees. Okay, so now why do you suppose I have you do that? Well, now I know that I can go like this and say that's 2 and this is negative 2. Is it okay if you put the 1s in? Sure. If you want to put 1 and negative 1 in, that's your preference, whatever you want to do. And also the reason we find that out is now you know what to put out here all the way to the right. You know to put 90 there. And you know to put negative 90 over here. And again, of course, you can sit there and fill in some of the other ones. But this one gets pretty tricky pretty quick. For example, what is that one that I just put the blue mark on? For a, a, an angle. 22 and a half. Now what's that one? I just put the blue mark in there. Very good, 67 and a half. It's right in between 45 and 90. Or you could say it goes up by 22 and a half, the mean. So you notice I only did it to the right, because what happened last time, once we got the right done, didn't we pretty much know what the left was going to do? We're going to do the same thing here. These values, once again, may seem horrible. But that's not actually what I'll be taking cosine of. Where do you suppose we should start? Yeah, start at zero. Now, where actually am I going to substitute zero, though? In for theta. So I'm going to be putting zero right there. So you take zero, and then it says to take it times four, right? Which is still... Then it says to take cosine. Again, you see how I'm going right to left? Then it says take cosine of zero. Well, better get it drawn again. Hey, zero degrees. There it is. Cosine there is one. You agree I've pretty much done that portion of it. And at that far, if I go that far, I'm at 1. But now I have to take that answer times 2. Very good. So this answer actually ends up being? So 0 degrees, comma 2 means I'm sitting right there. Are you in agreement? Okay. Based on my tick marks, what's probably the next value I could choose? You could choose 45, but based on my tick marks, 22 and a half comes next. But where do you have to put 22 and a half? You gotta put it in for theta. Before I take cosine, what do I have to do to that 22 and a half degrees? I gotta take it times four. Oh, it happens to be 90. Look at how nice that works out. It ends you up right here. And what's the order pair there? Zero, one. So, so far we've done four times 22 and a half and we figured out it was 90. So what's cosine at 90 degrees is zero. And then you take that zero times the two that's out front and you still get zero. Not really sure why I changed colors on you there, but I did. So you do agree, if I put 22 and a half degrees in, I get zero for a y value. Now, based on my setup, what should I try next? And I'm guessing many of you have a really good idea of where it's going to be anyways. Okay, so 45 degrees, remember you have to put that in here. So I have to take that thing times 4, which means it's 180, correct? What's cosine at 180? Oh, well, we're over here, let's find out. Cosine there is negative 1, right? So is negative 1 the y value of this particular graph then? Why not? I have to take it times 2, so it's negative 2. I'm guessing many of you already have 67 and a half degrees figured out. We'll put 90 degrees in. 67 and a half before I take cosine. Because let's face it, do we know cosine of 67 and a half? Is that one of them that's on the unit circle? No, where do I got to put that first? In for theta. So we got to take that times 4. Well, that's a little bit harder to figure out. It is 270. So what's cosine at 270? It's 0. 0 times 2 is? Any big surprise that that ended up right here? I hope not. And I hope 90 is also not a big surprise. Because you put 90 degrees in. You take it times 4 first, you get 360 which means I'm pretty much right back to where I started. And it was 
zero or two there. Does that graph look familiar? That is exactly the same thing that happened on that so-called parent graph from zero to 360 for cosine. Do you see how you might be able to start graphing these a little bit quicker once you get the idea? Again, that's because phase shift has not been brought in yet. So what do you think about, uh, say, negative 45 and some of those other ones? Yeah, very good terminology. It's just going to mirror it. And so probably here, there, there, and there. Do you believe that to be pretty accurate? Yeah. And there's that same W shape that you got when you did regular cosine from negative 360 to 360. Now, if I actually asked you to graph it from negative 360 to 360, would it look just like this? No, no it would happen a whole lot of times, correct? Okay, so keep that in mind. For those of you that maybe would like to see it, I'll just show you the right portion of it. So remember, it would go That's what it would look like if you went from 0 to 360. How many times did it happen? Four. Okay. Because really, the only portion we have right now is from there to there is all we're looking at right now. Okay. Any questions? Hopefully, you're starting to get the hang of this. Yeah, tangent is normally 180. You are correct. This is the one that changes things a little bit. Amplitude and period. Amplitude, yeah, not really applicable for tangent because can it really be measured? No. Is that four out front going to affect my graph? Yes, it will, but is it a measurable effect? No. So we would say either NA or, again, that means not applicable, no amplitude, or just no solution there. Now, here's the tricky one, though. For tangent, what is the normal period? 180. And you still divide by that number there. And so what is my new period? 90 degrees. And based on my suggestions, what does that mean? Yeah, the fourth tick mark over there, make it 90. Which means make this one? Negative 90, and yeah, make this one. Well, isn't this the same numbers we just had? And, and what would you do? I know what I would do for those numbers. You can make it as big as you want, but I would kind of go with the 4. You know, 4 here and negative 4 there. I think it'll be clear enough what's going to happen. But we have to remember something, because if we're going to be using the unit circle on this, we have to know how to do tangent on the unit circle. And I gave you a little hint. I know it's been a week since we had class. But I gave you a little hint about tangent. And I told you that tangent is sine over cosine. And you may remember that sometimes tangent ended up being 1 in certain locations. And sometimes it was undefined, and sometimes it was 0. All right, well, let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to start? Ah, zero sounds good. So basically, here's how I would look at it. You're putting zero in there and in there. All right? And so let's graph it again. I'm just going to get some of the major ones on here, if you don't mind, to save some time. Do all those look pretty accurate? All right. And so it's saying to take sine over cosine over here. I'm at doing it at zero degrees, right? Because that's what I said to substitute in. So it's sine at zero over cosine at zero. What is sine at zero? Right? Sine is that one, right? So it's, it's telling me to do zero over one, which I know is a wonderful question for this class because we are all in agreement that zero over one is zero. So zero degrees is zero. Of course, it's when zero is on the bottom that it's undefined. Now, here's the one thing that's slightly different with tangent. 
and I thought I was having a problem with my little strategy I came up with, but I found out I didn't have a problem with my strategy because it came up to a very nice location anyways. The next tick mark, do you agree, is 22 and a half. Okay, now, I probably should have slowed down here for a second. Let me show you something here quick. Tangent of 2 theta is sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. It didn't affect our first one. But what I do is let's just take 2 times that. Well, what is 2 times this theta we got down here? 45. Well, do you agree? You agree that's 45 degrees right there? What's the uh, x value there? Square root of 2 over 2 and the y value? So it's, I'm supposed to take sine over cosine right there? Yeah. It's 1. All right, 1. But wait a minute. We have to take it times 4. So it's 4. 22, and there's 4. I unfortunately erased that at some point. So 45 degrees goes right down there. We're getting close. So 45 degrees, where are you going to put that? You're going to put it right in here. Take 2 times 45 is? What's tangent at 90? Well, 90 is sitting right here. And 90 is sine, which is 1, over cosine, which is 0. And remember, 1 over 0 is? And what does that mean on your graph? Ah, asymptote. All right, well, let's go 67 and a half. 67 and a half, you take that times 2, where are you at? 135, which is? Um, sine over cosine is negative 1, but you got to take it times 4, so it's negative 4 is for 67 and a half. Any ideas what's going to happen at 90? Nice try with the asymptote, but it will not be an asymptote because you have to take 90 times 2, which is? 180, tangent at 180 is 0 over negative 1, which is 0. Now, here's where you can look at it differently as well. Do you agree the period is 90? So how often should I have an asymptote? Every... 90. So if at 45 there was an asymptote, where's the next asymptote if you're going left? Negative 45. And here it comes. Now, is it okay, according to me, if you kind of finish those off, if you feel more comfortable with that? That's fine. That's up to you. <laughs> 